Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Here I show the example. So the same, the same sequence I give. A A T C T A T A. This is second one. A A G A T A. Right. If I want to align these two sequences without introducing any gaps, how many ways we can align? Three ways. Because I don't want to introduce any gaps. So first sequence I put here. Second sequence here I put the left side. Right. At the left leftmost side. And here I put it in the middle. And here I put the right side. Now we see which method is the good, which alignment is the best. So we use some scores. For example, if we take match score one, or the if the sequence one and sequence two are same, if the residues are the same, then we give uh, match score one. We put the match score zero if they don't have any match. If there is any change, if the residues are the same, we give score one. If the residues are different, we give score zero. So in this case, if you take the first alignment, how many matches? One, two, three, four matches. So the score will be four because all the mismatch we, we put zero. So four plus the zero that's equal to four. If you take the second uh, example, what is the score? One. one because only one match. And with the, the third alignment, three, right? One, two, three. Match will be 3. Right, so, we have the identity matrix, we use ATCG. So, if it is same, we put 1, and if it is uh, different, we put 0. Right, that is fine. Now, if you introduce gap, how, why do you want to introduce gaps? To better alignment. Better alignment, right. So, if we, uh, there, is a, there is some changes, right. So, we need the gaps. So, in this case, if you do the gaps, how many different ways you can align these two sequences? We are here the length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right. So, here we have length as 3, 6. So, how many different ways we can align these two sequences if you introduce gaps? So, there are various ways. So, there are 28 different ways you can align uh, these two different sequences. So, I show an example. Okay, this is sequence 1, here sequence 2, this sequence 3. Here I put two gaps here, one gap is here, one gap is here. Here also the same, same here, right. Here you put the gap here, here you put the gap here, here these two gaps are similar together. So, here we have to give a penalty. The previous alignment we give the match score and we give the mismatch score. In this case, here we have the gap. So, we need to introduce gap penalty. So, here I put minus 1 if there is a dash either in the first sequence or in the second sequence. Then match score is 1 the same as before. So, if this is equal to sequence 1 equal to sequence 2. So, if there is a mismatch, we can put the mismatch score. So, you can put a mismatch score if sequence 1 is not equal to sequence 2. If you do this, what is the score for the first alignment? So, this is 1, 2, 3, right? For the alignment, match score is 3. This is minus 1, this is minus 2, and others are 0, right? So, this will be 1. So, if we take this alignment. So, what is the matching score? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 minus 2 3 okay, plus 0 this equal to 3. So, about this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 5 minus 2 plus 0 this equal to 3. Right? So, if you the earlier alignment we got the score here without gapping gap. So, we get the score of 4, 1, 3. Now, we aligned with the gaps. So, if we change the score, we get uh, 1, 3, 3. Now, so now, next question is, okay, if you have these gaps and if you have this mismatch, whether we need to give same weight or different weight. Before that, I give another example. So, here we have the protein sequence. So, here I give the DNA sequence and I give another protein sequence here. This is sequence A here sequence B. There are different ways we can 
align the two sequences. So, I find the first one, so I put some gaps in the sequence A and the sequence B. In the second alignment, there is no gap in the sequence A, but some gap in the sequence B, and the third one we introduce gaps. So, we take the one example. So, if you take the first alignment, so this is same, T and D are same, I and I are same, this T and T are same. So, here this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, right, and here this is a gap, so minus 1, this is a gap, minus 1, and here again a gap, this is minus 1. So, 4 minus 3 that is equal to plus 0 that is equal to 1. The second one, so we did not give gaps. So, in this case here this is 1, 2, 3, minus 1 this is equal to 2, right. So, if you compare the alignment between 1 and 2, what is the difference? Gaps, right. So, difference is gaps because of the gaps we give the penalty. So, this is why alignment 2 is better than alignment 1. So, we try to minimize the gaps and maximize the score. Right, this we can do in several different ways. So, now another issue is we introduce gaps. Right, if you see this uh, alignment, so we introduce gaps, but there is a difference between the dif introducing the gaps. If you see the first alignment, how many gaps we introduced? Two. Two are the same position or different positions? How many different two different times we introduce gaps? This is one time we introduce here, second time we introduce here. Here we introduce one time here and second time here. And third one we introduce gap together. So, if you look into this evolutionary rates or look into this the origin of different organisms, right. So, getting continuous gap is more closer than introducing gaps at the different regions, or otherwise, if you have insertions or deletions which happen at different places are less probable than having these insertion deletions at together at same stretch together. So, if we want to take into this account, what we have to do? Yeah, we have to give some penalties for the origination gap and we have to give penalty for each gaps, right. So, we will do that. So, if we have two sequences, any arbitrary sequences, one is 12 residues and 9 residues. So, we have shortage of 3 residues. So, we have to introduce 3 gaps, either these 3 gaps can be together or we can separate the gaps here and there. See if we have the homologous sequences and some residues are missing at the N terminal or the C terminal. In this case, we can keep these three residues, right, either insertion in one sequence or the deletion in other sequence, right, at one place. So, in this case, we can cover all other sequences. In this case, we give penalty based on the gaps where we introduce. So, I give an example, right. So, one is origination penalty. So, that depends upon the gaps we introduce here for each series of gaps where we introduce in a sequence we give a penalty that is called origination penalty and the second one is length penalty that is number of missing characters when the sequence 1 and the sequence 2 when you align each other how many places where it is not aligned how many places you have the gaps ok. So, now we gave the three sequence the same three sequences here we have the gaps at two different places and here also we have the gaps at two different places and here the gaps are at the same place. So, if you take the origination penalty of minus 2 because we are introducing right we do not want to introduce because nature does not want to select these insertion deletions. So, we give the penalty of minus 2 and length penalty of minus 1 and the match score of 1 and the mismatch score is 0. If you do this what is the score for the first alignment? What is the match score? 3. Three. Which my score is 0 anyway and what is how many origination penalty? 2, 2 into minus 2. 2 times right, when we originate here, when we originate 2 here right. So, plus 2 into minus 2 right and plus how many length penalty? 2. 2 times multiplied by? Minus 1. Minus 1. So, this will get 3 minus 4 minus 2 right, minus 2. So, minus 6 3 minus 6 that is equal to minus 3, minus three. all right fine. So, now we take the second one. So, here what is the score? 5 plus zero. minus 4 minus 2 right, fine. 
this equal to minus 1. If we take the last one, so here 5 minus 2 minus 2, correct? This equal to 1. So, if you compare these two alignments, here we introduce only once, here introduce twice, right? As per the selection the, by the nature, right? We can this will prefer this alignment than this one because we insert two times here. So, the here we have the better score than the other, other ones. Here we use the very simple one putting the value of 1 and minus 1 uh, for the penalty right and minus 2 for the origination penalty and 0 for the mismatch. But is it reliable right. So, if you give just 1 and 0 is it fine for the alignment right so, because 1 and 0. So, but that we can change for example, if you in the case of nucleic, nucleic acids right. So, the for example, DNA. So, how many different bases? Four different bases. So, at the current C scenario, whatever the changes, we give the same score, but that is not reliable, right. Sometimes we change purine by purine, sometimes we change pyrimidine by pyrimidine, sometimes we change purine to pyrimidine and pyrimidine to purine. Likewise, in the amino acids, different types of changes. For example, if you replace alanine by valine. So, there is an effect because alanine is a hydrophobic amino acid, valine is hydrophobic. What is the difference between these two? Side chain. Side chain. This is bulkier than alanine. Alanine is only one stage group, valine is three. So, we have the bulkier group. But if you replace alanine by lysine, uh, this is positive charge. So, here this is hydrophobic. This will change the environment. So, it may not be good to have the same score if you replace alanine with the valine or a lysine, right. So, we need to consider the effect of the mutations. So, in this case we have to give the scoring in a different way right how to do that. But the blast in the blast sometimes they use the same nucleotides have score 5 and the difference have 4 or we can give the mild reward plus 1 or we can give the score of minus 1 in the case of transitions. What are transitions? What is called transition? Purine to purine like uh, A or G right or pyrimidine to pyrimidine okay C or C right they change vice versa. Then there is another called transversions. So, that means purine by pyrimidine and the pyrimidine to purine. Why they give the penalty of minus 5 and minus 1? Transversions. Right because what is the definition for the purines? Right what but the pyrimidines they have how many rings? Purine 2 rings, pyrimidine 1 rings. Purine 2 rings, pyrimidine 1 rings. So, here we are changing 2 rings to 2 rings or 1 ring to 1 ring that is fine this way they put the penalty of minus 1. On the other way if you change the other way around so one ring with the two rings or two rings with one rings. So, it may create either the crowded situation or that is to totally free this way they they do not avoid the situation. So, they put minus 5 ok now these are matrices. So, here these are the four nucleotides right A T C G. So, earlier we used 1 1 1 1. Now, we change it right this is if it is a score match score we put 1 right if it is purine to purine or pyrimidine to pyrimidine we give minus 1 right if it is other way around purine to pyrimidine or pyrimidine to purine so we give minus 5. If you make this score what will happen in the alignment? Mostly those alignment will be preferred where purine to purine right. So, either they try to match or if you want to imitate they try to make the similar type of amino acid residue or nucleotides they avoid the other way around because un, some instances we have to cannot avoid in this case we use, but in this case we give a score this is minus 5 ok. This is for the nucleotides what will happen in the case of amino acids how to deal with amino acids so, uh, there will be 20 cross 20 matrix right. So, we have 20 different amino acid residues. So, 20 different amino acids are classified in two major groups or two different major groups hydrophobic and hydrophilic and hydrophobic we have different groups like aliphatic or aromatic or uh, sulfur containing residues right. In the aliphatic it is uh, hydrophilic positive charge negative charge as well as the polar right. So, now we can see the mutations whether these two amino acids right are both have the aromatic functional group. So, in this case we can give a good positive score or we can give non-polar functional group with the charged group this is the aromatic to aromatic right that is fine aliphatic to aromatic is fine. 
So, if there is non-polar group with the charged group, here we get penalty because they alter the situations, right? This alter the stability or alter the function, like I we discussed in the case of sickle cell anemia. So, what is the mutation? Glutamic acid 6 to valine, right? So, it causes the cause diseases, right? Sickle cell anemia. So, in this case, we need to give penalty so that we can align like this. Okay, then what are different ways to have these matrices? So, we have 20 different amino acids, right? What are the possibilities of changing a specific amino acid to other amino acids, right? Either you can change the hydrophobicity, like just we discussed, or you can see the charge, or you can see the size. Small amino acid to small amino acid, here they do not care about the hydrophobicity, but they give the small residues, like serine to alanine or glycine to serine or they are the bulkier groups lysine to phenylalanine right. So, they give the size right they can derive the matrices right they can allow. Then another option is the genetic code. So, how many nuclear substitutions are necessary to convert a code on to an amino acid right. So, how many nucleotides Three. right totally 4 nucleotides right ATCG right. So, 4 but how many amino acids 20 right. So, in this case we discussed earlier about the genetic code. Some cases we have only one mutation, sometimes there are two, right. So, depending upon number of substitutions in the nucleotide that lead to the amino acid. So, we can accordingly you can change, okay. Single substitution they group together, two substitutions they group together, right. Likewise, they can make the genetic code to see how we can reliably you can align the protein sequences. And the common method, right, so you can align with the heterophobicity, you can align with the size, you can align with the charge, you can align with the, the number of changes in the codon. But the common method to derive the scoring matrices is mainly they check the substitution rates, the actual substitution rates. For example, I showed the my hemoglobin sequences, take the actual sequence and just the align and then see what is the actual rate, how many times alanine is mutated to valine, how many times alanine is mutated to aspartic acid. So, they take the real ones and from these real cases they derive the matrices. How many, what is the probability of a specific residue A to be mutated to the residues B, right. So, it is high or low in the real cases, right, for take the different organisms. So, based on that, they derive the matrix, okay. This is called the uh, called the scoring matrices. Okay, how to do that? So, in the alignment, if the residues are aligned quite frequently, okay, they give the positive values, and the alignment, if they are not observed, in this case, we need to penalize. So, we give the less score. So, how to do this? From the alignment of different sequences of various uh, homologies, right? Homology means how far they are similar, right? That I will discuss in the later classes. So, they divide a matrix that is called the point accepted matrix, mutation matrix, right? This matrix is called the PAM matrix. What is the PAM matrix? They will derive a, um, like a scores on the basis of how frequent the mutation occurs. Occurs, okay, right? So, this is PAM stands for point accepted. Point accepted mutation matrix, right. So, you can see you can derive the some power matrix, right, by the substitutions that occur in the alignments between similar sequences. So, if we have sequence 1, sequence 2, several pairs of sequences, right, some of them you can see 100 percent match, some the 90 percent match, some the 80 percent match, right. They use different types of sequences with the different matches, for example, 90 percent. So, we take the all the sequences which have the similarity of more than 90 percent. In this case, if you have 10 residues, 9 will match, 1 is different. And if you have 100 residues, 90 will match. And if you take the 100 residues, if it is 90 percent sequence, uh, sequence identity, so 90 will match, right? 90 match. And 10 mismatch, and this take this 10 and see the rate which residue in sequence 1 is mutated to which residue in 2, right? So, if you look at this very carefully, there are two sequences, right? Sequence 1, sequence 2, for example, A i T v. So, here A a t v, what is the uh, substitution? I to A. I to A. If I take this as sequence 1 and this as sequence 2, then what is the substitution? A to I. I. So, it is changed. So, when they derive this substitution matrix, say they do not care whether this is from one sequence or first to two or two to one. So, they treat this as similar. So, for the development of 
the prime matrix this way they get the diagonal matrix. So, we get one side will get the data, so second red is this mirror image of the other right that is you get the diagonal matrix. So, they usually use the sequences with more than 85 percent sequence identity in this means if you have 200 residues how many residues that have minimum uh, how many uh, minimum number of residues are aligned 70 if you have 200 residues the 170 residues should, be al should have aligned right 200 residues right or more this is minimum. So, then they get the changes and see how far the changes happened right. So, then how to construct a matrix first you have to see the relative mutability that means, for a specific amino acid is to A for example, alanine how far this A is mutated to other residue what is the frequency of the residue A to be mutated to other residues or any of the other 19 residues. Then the second one we need to think about how far this alanine is mutated to in specific residue how many possible substitutions alanine can make 19 right. So, the 20 amino acid residues so if alanine is mutated there are 19 mutations there are 19 different possibilities. So, now the question is what is the possibility of mutating alanine into glycine or alanine into lysine right if you align the sequences right. So, get the 95 percent sequence identity. So, we check the sequences and then see how far they are aligned. So, this is AIJ this for example, if there is the ACM what is the meaning of ACM? How many times right 16 is mutated to methionine right. So, methionine is replaced with 16 right how, how many times they have this mutation 16 to methionine right. Now, this is the specific mutations in the alignment that depends upon how many times this 16 occurs in the sequence and also how many times this 16 is mutated to other residues right. So, we need to consider all these aspects to derive the prime matrix. So, for example, if you take the any sequence for example, if you take alanine to glycine what are the different aspects we need to consider to derive the prime matrix frequency of alanine right first we need a frequency of alanine and then mutation frequency of alanine. So, this one and second one is how many times A is mutated. So, mutation frequency and then then how the specific pairs right for example, how many what are the preferred mu specific mutations for example, the mutations A to G right we need to consider all these aspects right to derive the prime matrix. So, now we normalize the frequency of occurrence of each amino acid and finally, take the log of the each values this will give you the prime matrix why do you take the log yeah because there is will be log numbers. So, in this case we can uh, explain right. So, in this case in the log scale so you can explain the probability of each amino acid residue to be replaced with the other residues in the evolutionary rates. So, we have different matrices for example, PAM 1. So, this means one substitution per 100 residues right this is called the PAM 1 matrix this is also called log arts matrix right because the entries are based on the log of the substitution probability. Then let us see how, how we derive the PAM matrix I will show an example right and we will derive the matrix right for example, if we have the 10 sequences we align the different sequences right and then see what are the different mutations and how we account these mutations to construct the PAM matrix. So, essentially if we are take PAM 1 right this is compare the sequences are closely related that means, they take high, highly homologous sequences and if we take the PAM 1000 this mainly with the distant relationship. So, they use various levels of sequence homology to derive the matrix normal normally you can use PAM 250 this, this is the usual ones we use for any alignment right for the generally aligning two sequences ok. Now, we will see how we derive the PAM matrix. So, what is essentially PAM matrix what is the expansion for PAM matrix point accepted mutation matrix right. So, now what is the how the matrix uh, looks like 20 by 20 matrix. So, all the 400 elements are different or, or any uh, anything similar symmetric right because a diagonal mat diagonal matrix right because of the reason I explained earlier. So, you can get symmetric matrix right. So, now we have uh, different sequences sequence 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 I give the different uh, sequences and from different one sequence other sequence you can see the mutation. So, from 1 to 2 
So, the position number 1 A is mutated to glycine right. For example, if you take this one here A C G C T A F K I right. This is 1 this go to 2 what is the mutation A is mutated to G right. So, now here the, the sequence is G C G rest is the same right C T A F K I. Then the third sequence we get one is right. So, here the mutation is I to L right. So, here this is the change. So, we get this sequence A C G C T A F K L. Now, the second one we, we make another changes A to G right. So, here make changes A to G right. We get this sequence G C G G C G C T G F K I right. You can see the change C to G this A to G right fine A to G this is the A and here you change to G. And here you can see the change the A to L this is the A here and here is L. So, here A to L and then we go to the other different uh, uh, mutations the third one so that is C to S right from here uh, C to S and the last one you can see G to A here G to A. So, you can construct a tree depending upon the substitutions in each sequence. So, I think I will discuss the development of the PAM matrix in next class. So, first we recap so what are the different aspects we discussed in today's class. Your first alignment what is an alignment? Comparison of two sequences. Comparison of two different sequences right. So, when you compare two sequences say sequence A and sequence B what are the various cha different changes? Mutations. Mutations Insertion. what is the mutation? Substitution. Is a substitution right change of uh, one nucleated one amino acid by the other one right. So, what is insertion? Okay. Yeah one of one nucleotides or amino acids that are uh, inserted inside the sequence. What deletions? One, one or two or one yeah amino acid series or nucleotides are deleted from the first sequence right. So, there are different ways then how, then how to align sequences we discuss about different aspects. First one we have two uh, sequences of different length right if we can align without any gaps and second aspect we introduced a gap right to different places right and the third one we discussed the difference between the origination and the gap penalty how many gaps and how many times we introduce gaps right based on that we aligned. Then we for the scoring we have there various ways to score the first one is for the nucle if you take nucleotide. So, how to order different ways to score? Tra tra transitions or the transversions right as well as the mass score right. In the case of amino acids what are the different ways to score? Based on heterophobicity, based on charge, based on size and based on the changes in the codons and the actual one we can check the evolutionary rates. If you are in two sequences what is the actual changes from one sequence to second sequence right. So, based on that we can derive a parametrics. So, what are the various factors one has to consider for the development of parametrics? Frequency of amino, frequency of amino acid, mutation frequency. frequency of mutation okay. and the probability of specific mutations right and we need to have some normalization factors to finally take the log to get the log odd matrix right. This is parametrics matrix also called log odd matrix right. Then the for, for the specific example we will discuss next class. Thanks for the kind attention.